Hi, this is Todd Carter of TaxPoint. Today I want to show you how TaxPoint integrates with Drake software and show you how to configure uh, the TaxPoint integration properly so that you can ensure that your tax returns, tax return status information is being shared with TaxPoint. So I've created a, uh, a test return for our user and I can show you the integration in a couple different ways. We can actually navigate over to the miscellaneous tab and select call the tax point consent check uh, ready notification or actually I can just type in C-A-L-L -L and hit enter and jump right to the call screen. Now the first thing you'll notice at the top here is a taxpayer consent to disclosure. This is part of the 7216 uh, regulation the IRS put out a few years ago which says before a taxpayer can share information with a third party, which tax points consider a third party, you must have um, consent from your uh, taxpayer, taxpayer to share that information. And so we have some forms that are downloadable on our website. You can download those, print those out, and have your customers sign them. But before Drake and TaxPoint actually sync their information, before that actually happens, this checkbox uh, must be uh, signed. Uh, selected before Drake will actually transmit or, or, or sync their information about a particular return with TaxPoint. So unless you select this uh, or if you select not signed, that information will not be disclosed to to TaxPoint. That will show up on the TaxPoint website as an undisclosed return. Now we can give you a count of how many undisclosed returns we have per EFIN, but giving you any more information other than that, like what returns specifically were not disclosed, is, is clearly not going to be um, uh, available. Now, uh, that being said, once you've clicked signed, you have a few options down here. Uh, you can just choose not to choose anything, and that means my customer or your customer wants to call in and uh, either call in with the IVR, so our toll-free number, or they want to check uh, their status on the internet, so refundpoint.com. Now, for those customers that have signed up for the Silver account, um, you have uh, uh, only the uh, refundpoint.com to check, or you can optionally check check email, make sure you supply an email. Now one thing to be aware of, if you select email here but you don't supply an email right here, um, this screen will not warn you of that and effectively we won't be able to email your customers. So it's very important that there's uh, that you have some kind of validation uh, process in your mind that when you select email here we need to supply an email. Now for uh, gold customers, you can select email, uh, you can also select voice or text or actually all three. Now clearly the same rule applies here for email. Uh, for, for voice or text, actually specifically for text, we're going to definitely need a cell phone. So you populate this here. Again, if you select, uh, uh, select text messaging and you forget to supply a cell phone, um, the screen will not warn you of that and we will not be able to text message your customer with their, the status of their e-file. So it's extremely important that you, uh, you complete the form. Now, um, uh, another thing to be aware of that for gold and, uh, sorry, for gold customers and, and for platinum customers, you can select multiple of these, uh, voice, text, and email. And so for uh, e-files uh, that you're paying 25 cents per uh, e-file, even selecting voice, text, and email, we're going to notify them all three different ways. It's still only going to cost 25 cents, so it, it doesn't really matter. The same thing for bank products. For bank products, those are 50 cents per bank product. Again, you can select all of three of these, and then with a bank product, your customers can call into the IVR, they can check the internet, uh, refundpoint.com, as much as they want, and it still only costs you 50 cents per bank product. Now, by default, if they don't select anything over here in the lang under language preference, it's going to be English, but should you choose, you can choose Spanish as well. So, so keep that in mind so that if your customer decides they want um, uh, voice, text, and email in Spanish, the email will actually be sent to them in Spanish as well as the text message will be in Spanish and then as you would guess uh, calling them with a voice uh, message, so a phone call, automated phone call, that will actually be in a professionally recorded um, Spanish um, message. And that's really the entire integration. Just again, the key point is if you don't select this it will not be sent to tax point. Now, you may by design, uh, maybe for some customers, you want to select not signed. Now, that may be for a couple of different reasons. One is the customer didn't sign the consent. The other is you don't want them to be contacted at all. You don't want 
So let's say it's a bank product, but you don't want them to be contacted, and you don't want to be charged for that, for that matter. So let's say this is a bank product, you select not signed, they will not be able to call in the IVR because, frankly, we don't know anything about their return, so they'll be a little disappointed. Uh, the other thing is make sure you, you won't get charged for that either because we will never see the bank as a bank product on, on our end. Now, clearly, with this being so important, it's important that your uh, tax preparers make their way to this screen and actually deliberately fill this out of signed or not signed. So how do we do that? So Drake has an option available to us uh, over here under, under, we'll close this out, under Setup, under Options. We can go over here to the Administrative Options, and we have this Use Customized Flagged Fields on Return right here. We select this we hit flag and of course now what we're wanting to do is we want to flag these specific questions if you will or settings for each um, uh, each type of return specifically so let's let's look at the 1040 individual so for this what we can do is we can then you see the same screen we see with normally when you fill out a 1040 individual we're going to jump back over to the miscellaneous and go to the call screen just like we we would before this time what we want to do is we want to make sure this is, is answered properly so what we can do is actually right click on this guy and we have two options we have flag for review when screen is created or flag for review when return is created and we suggest that you select the second one which is flagged when return is created if you select the first one what that'll do is that will tell you that will allow you to flag this as hey you need to answer this if you happen to open this screen up and you didn't answer it we're gonna flag that now that might be uh, but the problem with that is you have to make sure that you make your way to this screen and typically that's not the problem once you make it to the screen normally people answer it it's usually the second one flag for review when, re when return is created this is the one we want to select and by selecting this we're saying that before you transmit or you complete a return you need to have answered this question so that's what we're going to do here by doing that you can see it's kind of been highlighted you've got a little uh, indicator that says return and we're really done here so I can actually close this out I can then close out this screen here I can then hit exit here and I've made the settings now I can hit OK and now any new returns that I create uh, and I don't answer that question it'll be flagged as a potential problem so let's let's take a look what that looks like create a new return and I'm going to select individual return create a new test user. We'll go and close this screen down. We don't need that right now. And again, we're going to jump to the miscellaneous. Now, notice over here the miscellaneous, it's highlighted, and we've got uh, indication that we need to go in here and fill this guy out. You notice it's been flagged for us here. Now, I'll close this out. Let's look at a view of our messages. Specifically, uh, there's obviously a lot of error messages here because we really haven't done much uh, with this return, as you can see. I just I just started this guy, but notice we actually fall over to two different messages. But notice here it says there's unverified field in the following screens, the call screen, and so this is actually how your um, tax repairs can find out or remind themselves of needing to fill this thing out. So that's a, uh, uh, the way that actually works. So um, this will be right here in the messages. Um, typically, you only have maybe one message, but this is kind of float over to a second message screen. So that's where that will show up when you have that selected. So it now actually is, is baked into the workflow so the tax preparers can be prepared and understand that they've actually completed the tax return properly, they've answered that question, and you can make a deliberate decision to send that tax return information to tax point so we, we can notify your client or deliberately not send it to the uh, send it to tax point. And that ends this video, so thank you very much.